I'm Julian O'Shea and I'm in Fitzroy Garden in Melbourne and I'm sitting in the shade of this. This is an Araucaria bunya pine. Now I don't know a lot about trees, I only knew that because I looked it up on this. Urban Forest Visual, a map of every single tree in the city of Melbourne. Now this map is pretty clever but there's one feature about it that makes it distinct. This button right here that says email the tree. If I press it I can email this very tree and I'm going to show you why that is and what happens when you press that button. So to explain this map and the surprising story behind it, I thought I'd go directly to the source. This is Juliana Leslie who works in the Urban Forest team. So the Urban Forest Visual was first published in 2013, uh, about a year after our Urban Forest Strategy was endorsed. It represents all of our trees on a map. So all of our trees have asset numbers, we use those numbers internally, but what we did was we took that data set and we published it. Um, and you can go onto the map and have a little scroll around, select a tree. It'll give you the tree species as well as its age class. And there's also a little option to email the tree. Um, the reason we originally created the map was so that people could report issues with trees a little bit more easily or ask us questions. It's a, it's a bit of an education tool as well. Now, if this was the whole story, it would be an interesting use of open data and citizen engagement, but this is where the story takes a beautiful turn. But then just completely organically, through no, um, through no nudging on our end, the community started sending love letters to the trees. Um, some people refer to them as like a virtual tree hug, which is quite nice. Um, yeah, and we just started receiving these love letters from all over the world, from locals, but yeah, also for people all over the world who just go on the map and are having a little explore and they'll just email a tree. It's, it's great. That's right, hundreds of love letters to trees, sharing stories, some quirky and some heartfelt. Here's just a sample. Dear Algerian Oak, thank you for giving us oxygen. Thank you for being so pretty. Hello, Mr. Willow Leaf Peppermint, or should I say Mrs. Willow Leaf Peppermint. Do trees have genders? I hope you've had some nice sun today. Hi Tree, are you worried about being affected by the Greek debt crisis? Should Greece be allowed to stay in the European Union? Regards, Troy. Now being such a lovely story, it's no surprise that the media shared it widely and this is how I came across it. But there are a few things these articles didn't cover. Most importantly, what happens after you press send and do the trees ever write back? Now in my introduction before, I think I undersold Juliana's role because there's one other thing she does as part of this project. Yeah, so I keep um, oversight of the inbox that they come into. Then I actually respond to the emails as the tree. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's part of my job to respond as a tree to these people. Um, yeah, it's quite cute. <laughs> yes, Juliana is the person at the heart of this program, and this gives her some direct insight into the personal correspondence between people and their favourite tree. Quite often we'll have people tell me, um, well not me, they'll tell the tree. <laughs> um, my partner and I met underneath you and now we got engaged underneath you. I think one of my favourite was a young boy from America and he sent me a lot of details about his school life and everything he was doing and then I responded as the tree. And the mum got back in contact with me and told me that he was so um, happy with the outcome that he took it to show and tell. And then the, tree, the school ended up um, planting the same species of tree <laughs> in their garden, which is just so cute. So what does it take to communicate on behalf of nature? I don't dare to think that I know the wisdom of a tree, so I just keep it simple. I'll, um, if, a, if a kid sends me a tree joke, I'll send a tree joke back. Um, I'll, I'll use a lot of tree puns. I keep it light because I think if we only knew what a tree actually thought, um, I'm sure they'd be very wise and I'm not up to that. <laughs> So there are over 70,000 trees on the map and the council is planting 3,000 per year more with the goal of getting to 40% canopy cover of the city by 2040. So I wanted to know, was there any one tree that was the most popular? That the most popular tree is a golden elm on Punt Road. Um, it's been there for a very long time and it's very beautiful. <laughs> Interestingly, we actually got the person who's grandma, I believe it was, planted the tree many years ago. Then they so happy that it's still being managed and it's still thriving. So that was really lovely. Armed with this information, I wanted to find and see Melbourne's most popular tree for myself. So I headed across during rush hour to have a look. So I made it down here to check out the most emailed tree in Melbourne. Now, there might be a lot of background noise because it's rush hour at the moment and Hoddle Street and Alexandra Parade are an absolute mess. Now, it is a huge tree, it's a beautiful tree, I can see why people like it. That slow drive, push up Hoddle Street, Punt Road, and then being able to see this. 
and is a majestic old tree. It's listed as a tree of state significance by the National Trust and is at least 70 years old, planted in 1938, but its exact age isn't known as it might have been planted as a sapling or a mature tree. And while I'm here, here are some emails that this tree has received. Dear tree, if you are that big, round, beautiful, low-hanging tree, I think you are my favourite tree. Such beauty on an ugly road. Keep up the good work. You are my favourite tree, even when you make me stoop over during my morning run when you grow too big. Love, M. I used to think you were the magic faraway tree when I was a child. Now that I'm an adult, I still look forward to seeing you as I come around the bend after a tedious crawl down Hoddle Street. Look, it's an impressive tree. They've named the reserve after it. There's a couple of benches here that you can sit and take a bit of a quiet spot in what is not a quiet place. The Yarra River's just there and the bridge that goes over, and this is what you see, this massive tree. So this tree is well loved and contacted, but I did want to know whether the Melbourne Council approved of this type of correspondence and whether they encourage further tree mails. Oh, absolutely. Yes, please. The more the merrier. <laughs> Thanks for watching, this was a really lovely video to put together. If you enjoyed it, do subscribe, leave a comment or email this tree. It's tree number 1040601. I'm Julian O'Shea, take care.